Let's uh, a few people are asking about shotgunning. That's a pretty that's a pretty big one. Let's uh, let's talk shotgunning if you don't mind. I'm gonna grab some sure. skills because I've done. Uh, I I created this character with the anticipation of testing some of the shotgunning changes, uh, specifically um, freezing pulse and ball lightning. I tested quite a bit. Um, so it's obviously like I've talked to Rory and I've talked to a few of you guys in the past when when designing uniques and when talking about new skills and stuff like that. And uh, often the topic of shotgunning came up as a a point, a point of issue uh, in creating new skills and, and balancing and stuff like that. So, uh, kind of like what was, I guess, explain the decision to remove shotgunning from the game. So there were three core things here. The first one was that shotgunning was the best way to play your spellcaster, right? It had the best area damage and the best single target damage because you could shotgun. So multiple projectiles was just the king. You basically had to use it or have a good reason not to. And there was no real choice there. The second thing is that when we were designing skills, very frequently we'd have to say we can't add this because of the shotgunning effect. I mean, ball lightning, we had to manually prevent the balls from zapping guys who have just been zapped, and we had to go to tons of work in order to do that. And we were lucky we were even able to release that skill. Yeah, I know um, that despite the when that it was, was prematurely released. <laughs> yeah, I remember when that was first released with shotgunning, it was insane, and that was like the reason it took so long to come out. Because actually, I, I went back and looked at that video, and it, it came out like. I don't know, like half a year after that premature release. So yeah. it took that long to balance it after that point. Indeed. And shotgunning is honestly kind of responsible for that. And then the third reason is when we were looking at why melee was having an inferior experience compared to ranged, you know, when we were working on creating Path of Melee. And the primary reason that we found was that, like, when you say, say you leap slam into a group of monsters, they all start to attack you at the same time. They all, you know, fire shotgunning projectiles at you. It's just basically insta-killed you and we were able to address both problems in different ways but turning off shotgunning was really important there to give melee a chance point like against monsters yeah um that like from the perspective of incoming damage the uh shotgunning change is like such a big improvement especially for melee like a lot of the guys who are testing melee at the moment are talking about that i mean it just means that there's a lot less spike damage that the game becomes more tactical as the time to death increases mm. because you're not having those insta rips from shotgunning Right, so. and I understand that if you're playing a shotgunning multiple projectiles character before expecting to do amazing group damage and amazing single target damage, then it's certainly a nerf, right? Like, you have to build your character differently now. And that's partly because those characters were basically dominating for a number of years. Now you basically have to find a good way of doing good single target damage and find a way of doing area damage, like a reasonable character should. Yep, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, obviously in light of the removal of shotgunning, that there's going to have to be a lot of changes to uh, make skills uh, worth using again because a lot of them so heavily relied relied on shotgunning. A good example being being fireball and freeze pulse, two of the ones that I tested. I knew relied on uh, shotgunning so much, uh, and the the sort of the outcome that I found at least so far with with freeze pulse was that when you when you're leveling with freeze pulse and even at end game, uh, the op there is the option of not adding element uh less multiple projectiles like it's no it's no longer mandatory however i still feel at end game uh for aoe that even stacking projectile speed is kind of like it makes it, a, it i guess it makes it akin to glacial cascade but with the drawback that it only deals damage in closer range uh, so i still feel like less multiple projectiles still feels like a very uh like a significant choice for end game because you need you need that aoe for that clear speed uh However, because it relied so heavily on shotgunning and because it, like, st it stacks up so well as well, I feel like there at least needs to be some mechanical changes to some skills. Like I talked about earlier, uh, the fact that fireball doesn't explode when it pierces it feels worse now that shotgunning isn't present. And the fact that uh, freeze pulse stacks up so well when you're using LMP feels pretty unintuitive. Like you have to aim at your character's feet to be able to get the skill to function correctly without shotgunning. So what's... Oh, we've dropped out, guys. We've dropped out. Hold on. We should be back in a second. Are we back? Hello. Oh, sorry, we're I back. Get dropped. Yeah, no worries. Uh, the last thing I heard was after you were mentioning fireball not exploding when it pierced. Yeah. Okay. So um, freeze pulse. You know, freeze pulse. Uh, you know, automatically stacks up as long as you're. You know, if you're aiming like. More than ten more than a centimeter away from your character, it 
it uh, it inherently stacks up. So there's, I feel like there's some mechanics changes that's going to need to happen to skills. Are you yeah. guys kind of like investigating that? Yeah, the guys are working on this hard. It's basically, we're willing to do that while the beta is in progress because we get good feedback on each change. People can jump on their characters and see how it compares with a large scale set of players. Um, our basic priority first is getting the monster life and damage about right across all mm. the different difficulties and maps. Okay, and, well uh, I'd like to bring that one up There's tons of work later. going on with the skills. Yeah, so like, I gave some specific feedback about Fireball and Freeze Pulse, but especially things like the fact that Freeze Pulse stacked up, stacks up so well, like the projectiles almost perfectly align on top of each other uh, if you aim far yeah. away from your character. But that serves no benefit now, now that shotgunning has been removed. So there are like some quality of life improvements, like forcing the projectiles to fan when you use LMP or GMP would be pretty nice. Stuff like that, I imagine, hopefully, hopefully gets changed. Yep. Makes the skills a little right. bit more fun to play. Several of our developers feel that Fireball should continue to explode when it pierces, so we'll be looking into that. Nice, nice. Yeah, yeah I... te Text messages from them saying, make sure to mention this might not stay that way. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> oh, thanks for tuning in, guys. I uh, yeah, I, I hope so. That's like that was my kind of takeaway from testing Fireball. That the fact that it doesn't it doesn't explode again definitely didn't feel very good with the removal shotgunning. So uh, good to know that's changing. But you you mentioned like um, first balancing mob life and damage before sort of finalizing the damage numbers on spells and stuff like that. So you guys have done yep. a lot of you guys are doing a lot of tuning overall for mob life and damage. I am feeling that it's different, but in some cases it's hard to put my finger on the changes. What's kind of happening? Yeah, there? there's there's been a fair amount of shuffle of the areas, as you know, and that's meant that area levels have changed, um, spell levels have changed substantially, and it's been it's been necessary because of this to change, um, you know, just to review all the monsters and make sure that they're using their spells correctly and they're set at the right level. And honestly, it's amazing how many small problems you find, right? Like, when going through this and reevaluating it with our new, like, experienced team as opposed to the, you know, beginner game developers who set it up years ago, it's just amazing how many problems we're thinking, oh, that's why all that stuff is broken, right, okay, and then we fix it. <laughs> like, the, that's that's why it's labeled 200, because it's just kind of a new path of exile. Yeah, it's such a big change. So I kind of want to, like, I, I pretty much understand, like, why a lot of spells in the current beta are feeling pretty lacking in light of the shotgunning change, because it is such a major change that... It's going to require, like, a complete retuning of the spells. Like, because they were so heavily heavily reliant on it, so... There's a lot of things that are going to look really lacking at the, at the current point that should be, you know... I mean, it took a long time to balance those skills around shotgunning. I guess, what do you anticipate? The, uh, I guess the freedoms now that shotgunning has been removed. There's a lot of skills that use projectiles in our, you know, upcoming skills document that we can now just make, and um, I probably shouldn't prematurely talk about what they are, but it, it'll it mean that we can continue to add interesting stuff to the game for quite some time, and like you mentioned uniques before, it's possible for unique items to now do more interesting stuff that we've previously not been able to. Yeah, one example I noticed is that um, there are there are jewels that add projectiles to totems and stuff like that. I, before that would have been a nightmare. <laughs> that would have been such a big yep. like damage buff for some totems that uh, would have been insane, but now you have the freedom to do that sort of thing. So we might see we might see more skills and more uniques that add projectiles. And uh, I think that's more fun in the end too. Shooting more projectiles is is more fun, and if it can be if it can be reasonably yeah. balanced, then uh, that's pretty nice. Like if you can cover that's half true. the screen and split arrows, then that's good stuff. I like it. <laughs> yep. By the way, talking about both projectiles and um, improvements to the game that we've noticed. So we found that. If you hit a bunch, this is something I mentioned in some places, but not particularly publicly. If you hit a bunch of monsters at once with something that deals tons of damage to all of them, especially something that causes the damage to splash, then it would play the damage effect on each one, potentially a ton of times. Like, you know, if you if you cause it thirty times within half a second, then it will play it on each monster thirty times within half a second, and you only need to play it one time. Like they're stacking on top of each other in a way that you can't really see. So we fixed all of that stuff. Um, which has made a big improvement to the particle um, performance of the game. So when ah, people ask nice. for particle sliders and stuff, the, the correct solution, rather than turning down or off particles, is to fix the problems that made it slow in the first place. So that's one reason why we've been silent on the where's our option to disable particles thing, because we know something's wrong, it's just a matter of finding all the cases of it. And this one here has made a big difference. Yeah, that's that's definitely going to be a really positive thing. So guys, there should hopefully be some less, uh, less FPS drops than what there have been in the past. That's good to know, that's good to know. Um, some people have been asking that, uh, is there the potential of, in the future, adding 
either a unique or a support gem that allows for shotgunning. I know in, I know on my stream I've talked about the idea that you guys could potentially add skills that have mechanics that have built-in shotgunning, like Ball Lightning was the anti-shotgun projectile spell. There's no reason you couldn't do the reverse, right? That's absolutely possible, but I haven't heard of any specific plans to do that, so I'm sure it would have to come with uh, due consideration. Yeah, totally make, makes sense, makes sense. So this one's coming up a lot at the moment, and I know I'm personally very interested in this topic. I kind of know you've already made a statement on this, um, but just, just again for people. I've like talked about, because this is such a big change, it's going to bring so many people to the game, that the importance of uh, the trading system overhaul you guys have been uh, talking about for a long time, like asynchronous trading. And I know that's been in that's been in development for a while, but uh, I know I know you said recently that it's not currently planned for this expansion. Is that still the case, or I guess what's what's the state of that the trading system? So there are a lot of different things we want to do with trade. None of them are in this current expansion, and this is partly because um, the same people who would improve trade would be the ones working on fixing desync. And one of these two features won in the battle of desync versus new trade, and. We're looking at various improvements in future expansions, or even future patches between expansions. So, I don't have anything to announce there, but it doesn't have to all come at once, right? Like, better item discoverability um, doesn't necessarily have to come at the same time as um, asynchronous trading or trading between instances. And there are some changes we've made. For example, we've been working on adding... Uh, let me make sure I'm phrasing this correctly. I don't even know if this is in for sure, but we've been looking at adding a way to generate a key that you can give to external tools to get access to your items on the website so that you don't have to give the tools your login information for using stuff like procurement. And ah, this means nice. that it'll be safer to use third-party tools yeah. that are made by the community. So we do want trading to be easier, and we'll do what we can to make it easier in the short term and safer for people because you know it's kind of it's kind of dodgy having to type your account details into stuff even when it's relatively trusted yeah um, yeah totally. so i know some people oh not that i'm saying procurement is a problem but even if even if a tool's author is, is completely genuine the fact that the tool could potentially have been changed by someone else when it was uploaded to a site or whatever means it's always a bit bad to type in your account yeah details you could get a dodgy copy places. from someone else totally and there's I, yeah. there are people i know who don't use either acquisition or procurement because of that and some people right. don't, and don't, I don't trust the, like the session ID system either. But if you guys made a system that's like this, this is safe, and then you can use right. this, and then people can use that. That would so be so. The nice thing about the nice thing about a key that lets you access the inventory is the worst thing that would happen if it was stolen was some guy could see your stash. You know, they can't do anything with it. They can't change your password. They can't buy microtransactions, or you know, log in and trash your characters or anything. So we have improvements like that that are on their way, but more comprehensive trade improvements will have to come in later updates and that'll be once we've got our you know core game architecture stuff really really solid okay so we might see some improvements to trading uh some quality of life stuff i'd like to see you know stuff like cross instance trading would be pretty nice just as quality of life before we see uh the major like overhaul yeah, there's, it's, it's likely to come in various stages anyway, like item discoverability, the ability to have a way of putting items in, like, I don't know, a trade stash tab and other people can view them, or maybe they're indexed so people can write searches or something. That's something which is completely different than cross-instance trading. Okay, awesome stuff. Well, that's good. it's good to get a statement on that kind of link. Know what's, know what's planned for that. I mean, it's, it's a shame from my perspective that... Uh, like a complete trading system overhaul is not coming this pension, but you guys are do you guys are doing so much already with it that <laughs> I can't be I can't be too mad. My madness can only know certain limits given the context of this expansion and the other uh, quality we're, we're... of life systems that are coming. <laughs> right. We also have strong views on how we, you know like making sure that trading isn't completely trivialized because we've seen what happened yeah. with the D three auction house and I mean. The, the example there is basically if you've got two games, one of which has trivially easy trading and one of which has relatively difficult trading, then if you find, say, ten items, five of which are good for you and five of which are good for other people, then in the game with trivial trading, you now have ten items that are good for you, whereas in the game with harder trading, you have five to ten items that are good for you. And so because of this, you've effectively got a higher drop rate for those who trade in the game with easier trading. Mm. So that exacerbates the difference between people who... Um, involve, who are involved in trading and those who, who don't. So in order to challenge those players who have better items, you have to make the game harder, which makes it unfair for those who aren't trading and now it becomes mandatory, and so on and so on. You know, there's a lot of um, like philosophical views on trading here, but we do want it to be easier than it currently is, and we absolutely won't be like disabling it like you know, other products have done. Yeah, I like what you guys have uh, talked about in the past about uh, making the... I guess the way I usually describe it is that there's like three steps to trading. There's like finding, there's actually performing the trade, 
Uh, well, there's like there's finding, there's the actual haggling and interacting with the other player, and then there's the actual execution of the trade. Um, I don't see any problems with making the execution of the trade easier. That's like you know crossing sure. some trading stuff like that. Uh, but I can certainly see problems in potentially making the finding of items too easy, and then uh, is especially removing haggling. Like that would be like for me a big negative, because I love I love trading in this game. That's like I love that there's two ARPGs that I can play one with one with no trading that I can just have fun in, and then the other one that I can like really get into the economy for. So um, removing that would be a real shame. So I guess I I guess I understand like where you guys are coming from with being cautious about it. Yep, well, well, we'll do what we can to make both the actual act of trading easier and item discovery a bit easier as well. But there will always be a component of having to, you know, complain about the other guy not accepting the lowball offer and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Block for lowballing is here to stay, guys. Chris Wilson quote, quote right there. <laughs> uh, alrighty, guys, continue Let's... to post your questions in chat and we, we'll pull them out as we go. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to pull out every single question that post, but we'll, we'll try and grab them as we can. Um, Ian the Retro Drunkie is asking about Leech. I know there's some Leech changes coming in this, but I'm not too clear on what's happening with Leech. I don't know if that's because gonna, it's not in there, or...? I'm going to avoid answering anything about Leech, because there's people here who can give very precise answers, and I really don't want to botch it. I kind of, okay. myself, haven't fully researched what the most recent changes are, and I don't want to accidentally repeat an out-of-date thing. So I'll, tell you, I'll, I'll note down that you want to hear about Leech, and I'll make sure that someone explains it at some point in the near future. Alrighty, cool. So hopefully we, we can see a, like a maybe a manifesto or something on that. Yeah, we do. We do need to um, post some explanations of some of these changes in the manifesto forum once we get time. Yeah, I do know a lot of people are concerned about the Leech changes because it's gonna it's a big sort of thing to have to build around. As a core, as a core philosophy thing for Leech, though, our goal is to make Leech slightly more powerful against groups of monsters and less powerful against bosses. So we want Leech to be better like it was in the past, but not to be a crutch that's really good against bosses. Yeah, so you'll probably I, see that. I saw that somewhere <coughs> else, maybe in regards to something, I can't remember what the other mechanic was, but the idea of face tanking bosses, trying to remove that, uh, at least partially. I know that with the fire form of Piety now, has a stacking debuff that means you can't just face tank fire form like you used to be, like you used to be able to. At least, you know, obviously, eventually, ARPGs are all about you eventually get to a gear point where you can face tank everything, but um, it seems to be you guys are moving away from that a little bit. Is that the intention? We want to have a, a flat level of difficulty with spikes of much more scary difficulty occasionally. Hmm. Okay, that makes sense. Um, people are asking about, like, uh, well, as as you said, it's not going to be able to answer specific questions on Leech, but I guess people are wondering, you know, whether Mana Leech is going to become... Uh, more useful because it was really hammered by the leech changes in the past. <coughs> we our leech changes do improve mana leech as far as I'm aware. So yeah. philosophically, my understanding is it's meant to be that when you're fighting just groups of monsters in a regular farming situation, mana leech is impactfully powerful. Mm. And when you're fighting against the boss, you can't just sustain your spells forever um, on the boss. Okay. Okay. So you might have I'm to already have digging mechanic. myself a hole here. <laughs> people people <laughs> right. are going to want to correct this tomorrow. So uh, yeah, yeah. Let's let's wait for an official word on that from the guys working on it. Yeah, like I don't want to. I don't want to force Chris to give out bad information here, guys. <laughs> so I can we'll, start we'll making up. stuff up if you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah you guys want to. It just won't affect the game. <laughs> That's not not more useful than just waiting for a. You know, hopefully we'll get a we'll get a post from someone who is able to give more intricate details. Um. Uh, is there a, I, just out of curiosity, do you guys know on what the st uh, status is for when the new maps will be coming out? Because I know they currently drop as the name, but they just redirect to old maps at the moment. I think that they're focusing on that once they have the remaining um, Act 4 areas patched in. So I think ah, you'll get the chance to play through the beast content, and then we'll get the maps. To be honest, the exact layout and boss fights on the maps don't require as much testing uh, at least publicly, so it might be a nice thing to potentially save for release, so ah, that there's okay. a you know, there's there's cool things to find on release. Because obviously here we've got a big trade-off. We want testing of stuff. And we want to hype people. So releasing it during the beta is great, but at the same time we want to provide a good reason that you play a bunch once it's actually out as well. And we've got the challenge leaks for that. We have a bunch of the uniques, and it may be that a few of the you know interesting encounters in the highest maps are a good thing to reserve there as well. But I don't know. This is me guessing again as well. Yeah, I, I was gonna say I, I don't know. Like, I I like the idea of hiding, some, holding some things back to launch, and I kind of hope you guys like hold off the lo the final boss because I think having one boss be a little bit OP is not too big an issue, if it means for an awesome surprise. 
but um, like map bosses and stuff like that, I think can can be uh, can require some testing. Like I don't know, I feel like there might have to be some testing there as they scale up, but maybe not. Yeah. We do have internal testing resources. The QA team is only growing. That's true. It might be a good use for the alpha realm if we're just looking to get forty or fifty people to test a a, uh, a specific thing. Yeah, I guess forty or fifty experienced mappers testing some <coughs> high level map bosses would probably be pretty pretty adequate. Just for making sure everything is okay. Good yeah, point. it comes down to whether or not we're wanting to hold off content for the sake of it. And to be honest, I'd rather get all of the core, like Act Four stuff, in during the beta. But we'll see. Uh, do you know how many people signed up for the beta? That's what some people want to know. I do. Uh, I don't think I'm meant to give out numbers though. Um, mm, fair it's enough. it's kind of funny looking at the difference between signed up people and signed up people after we removed the shell accounts because it's. People signed up a lot of accounts thinking we wouldn't remove those. <laughs> I mean, like, can't fault one, them for trying, I suppose. Account, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Uh. But the the beta um, has quite a large population of people signed up, so the invite timer is um, a steady but relatively unreliable way of people of getting an individual person in. So we'll make sure to provide other means for getting in and lots of interesting events and so on. Try and put some single fireball against Teresa here. It's pretty, it's pretty kappa. It's pretty good. <laughs> but I'm not, I'm not well set up. This is not just fireball being bad, guys. This is just me not being well set up for single target fireballing action. And the one one two is in chat. The one one two ones <laughs> in chat rain. Uh. I. Uh, People want to know if there's. I've seen this posted a few times. Whether there's going to be any like any new Uber boss. I know you guys talked about the potential of having other alternatives to Atsuri in the future, and having them be farmable by farmable by different builds. Any plans for that in the expansion? Not at this expansion, but it's an ideal place to go in subsequent ones. We kind of Act Four provides a lot of stuff to do, right? Not only playing through the Act Four content, but also playing through the maps based on Act Four. And I mean, just the amount of you know the meta changes, the dual stuff. It keep, it'll keep people busy for a very long time. So. At the point that we have to release more content in the future, you know, however many months down the track it is um, for the next expansion, we'll make sure to tackle things the game is missing at that point. And that might be that people want new endgame options. It might be that, um, you know, there's a massive emphasis on trade. So we'll work out um, what it is that the game is missing and plan that into our expansion schedule. But people should, of course, not expect another The Awakening sized expansion five months from now, because whatever's being released <laughs> then, we have literally not even thought of. Yeah, right? There has not been a discussion of what are we doing when The Awakening is done. So yeah, we'll work yeah. that out. All the get it done. Yeah. My... Well, I mean, bear in mind, when we released the 1.3.0 PvP update in December, we had Act 4 like almost fully playable. You know, the Awakening was well underway. Um, we've been, we're used to working on multiple things at the same time, so it's going to be very strange going back to what's the next thing we're going to make in terms of a PoE expansion and then starting work on that. So my, my answer to that question is, guys, we're getting nine bosses in this expansion. <laughs> and that means like heaps more map bosses too. I guess Ubers are a different yeah. thing, but <laughs> I mean, we're getting a lot of boss fights in this expansion. I was not at all expecting an Uber myself, I was expecting that later. Well, we made it with the fireball, guys. We did it. Fireball's still single target viable. <laughs> um, this that's actually brings up an interesting point. With the shotgunning changes now, I feel like a lot of spellcasters that use spells that used to rely on shotgunning for single target will now need to run a single target spell. Will we see more single target spells? Like, for example, right now, as a fire character, you can pretty easily work in Flame Surge to build a single target as long as you have the links, and that works really well. I was using that when I was leveling. Um, but there's less options for other ones. So, like, a Freeze Pulse character doesn't... Like, I couldn't really think of a, an obvious single target. Some some spells are great, like Cascade is good single target and decent AoE. Like Ice Spear is a good single target cold skill, isn't it, if you have some distance on them? Mm, <laughs> I guess that's possible. Everyone's like, Chris said Ice Spear? Is that still skill still in the game? Like, uh, what the hell? I guess. I guess it could work. I mean, yeah, some people are saying Ice Spear in chat. Alright, I, I guess that can work. I just, I don't know. I, I, I find it... Yeah, I guess some bosses and stuff you can... You can kite back a little bit and position while they so use their attacks and use After I just yeah. discredited myself massively by mentioning that... Um, the guys do have a big list of skills that they're looking at adding, some of which are basically confirmed for the expansion. There's, well, there's some very cool stuff that we'll be releasing soon. Um, a non-single target ice spell, there's 
anyway, I won't go into that in too much detail, but they have a laundry list of stuff they want to add in the future after that, and I'll go make sure that they do have good single target stuff for each element on the list as well, especially in the era of no shotgunning, but I would honestly expect that they already do. Hmm. The, the other alternative is... Um, so I, yeah, I don't know about I, I don't know about the ice beer suggestion, but as a freeze pulse, you can do things like run a single target freeze pulse. So on a full link with, well, I don't know, like that one's a bit difficult to like. You can get some out of damage and just not run LMP and have the high damage for single target, but it's not uh, it's not insane. Like ones that have a bit of AOE, you can at least add conk effect for single target. I don't know. There's some options, but I do feel like it's an area that's a bit little bit lacking now that shotgunning has been removed because that was relied on so heavily for single target. It was never an issue before. Fair enough. Well, that's good feedback. Cool, cool. Please, frozen orb. <laughs> The problem is you end up trying to make a four link single target better than a yeah that's it when you're on a six link for your multi target like then you're trying to compete a four link against a six link there are some uniques that allow you to do that with like ones that have added supports to them but i guess eventually at a certain gear point your single target becomes not an issue but i don't know it feels a little bit awkward at the moment that's what i'm feeling uh lots of questions there are um i don't think no shay that Chris would have re revealed vendor recipes. I know you guys like to usually keep them secret, right? Yeah, we generally have a policy of not revealing them unless there's something remedial for builds, like, hey, this is how you can get Quicksilver flasks or whatever. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, like, some of the racing ones and stuff like that. That'd be good for that. That makes sense. Um, <laughs> uh, Cray Crazets is asking about phase run. I know you guys recently... Uh, are you recently held a Q&A or a, a trivia... That uh, asked what's one skill that might be added back in, right? <laughs> yeah, well, I think I think we'd confirmed phase run before that somewhere. But we do have phase run on the schedule for two hour. We're even counting it as a new skill because it's so different. Okay, um, I heard that it's, it's, uh, we'll still have the, like, the, uh, the burst of damage on your next hit, which sounds similar, so I wonder how it's different, then. I'm curious to see how that works out. I guess. Uh, I'm sure Rory will, uh, either patch it into beta or post something to explain this in the near future. Cool, cool. You may notice, by the way, that I have little involvement with skills myself. I'm more of an item guy in terms of the design. Yeah, yeah, totally. They I care a lot a about of, items. A bit of a picture I of what's happening. I let handle skills. Yeah, yeah. yeah I ba basically, just because I'm sitting in a place in the office where I can hear people talking about skills, that's how I know it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. That's why I'm trying to avoid any specific questions you guys are asking about. Like, why is the balancing on arc, you know, not being changed? Um, that's, uh, you know, not really the best questions to ask, Chris. That's better questions yep. for, like, Rory or someone. Uh, yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. Though you do... So you said you said a bit more about items. I know you recently had to uh, design your own unique item. Uh, so you that's right. have a bit more of a hand in items, though. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm our items guy. Yeah, there you go. I didn't know that part. Now you guys, if you guys do have uh, rip mic, uh, sorry guys, switch to mono audio. All right, let me try that. Sorry guys. Yeah, if you guys have any questions about um, force mono, let's do that. All right, let me know if that fixes the problem, guys. I apologize. <laughs> Must be my mic is starting to dodgy out. Yeah, if you guys have sp items about uh, questions about items, then Chris may be able to answer more specifically. That's good. Uh, people are asking about your unique. Do you want to talk about your unique, or do you want people to figure it out? I can talk about it. It's in the game, and uh, well, let's have to be careful here. Mm -hmm. Sure, it's um, <laughs> it's an item that people can find, and then they can put on and use and enjoy, hopefully, and maybe other things, but they can work those out. <laughs> well, we'll leave it there. We can leave Maybe it there. Maybe they should go fishing with the item on and see what happens. I'm just kidding. I people are saying it does look a lot like a lure. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to add that to my fit, my updated fishing guide that I make. There's yeah. nothing wrong with your mic. All right, so it seems like some people are getting an issue and other people's aren't. I think that I've heard the issue before where it switches audio channels. It's uh, it's yeah, that's a bug either with OBS or something. But Mono should have fixed it. Hopefully, let me know if it sounds like terrible or what now. <laughs> you guys know that uh, another uh, you know a form of fishing is also known as trolling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Indeed. Let's get, let's get some GMP fireball mapping action going on. Not so good on the old single target though. I need need flame surge running. 
Yeah, yeah, maybe that's the issue. If you're not using headphones, you won't hear you won't hear the issue. Right, back to the back to LMP, change my mind. <laughs> not viable without single target. Are there any features? Someone asks Yeah, go ahead. Oh, sorry, go on. No, I was go. gonna say someone asks what my favorite Marraketh item is. This is very difficult because they all kind of look very cool. I think I like the katana sword. Mm. Probably my favorite in terms of how it appears. It looks particularly but, um, rad on the witch. We did some testing of that earlier. Yeah. It's interesting with Americath items, we hit into it, we hit something that we normally haven't run into in design, which is the fact that one of the things we wanted to do is make these items look really neat. And that actually kind of is our business model, is selling things that look really neat. So it was interesting, um, you know, coming up with a set of stuff for the actual game itself that wasn't a microtransaction skin, but looked very cool, so that pay players could equip them if they wanted you have to, to without having cool, to buy microtransactions. But not too cool. <laughs> well, we didn't coat them in fire, you know, so that, yeah, that helped yeah. a bit. <laughs> That's, uh, I know some uniques end up getting MTXs, but I guess you have to be kind of limited on what you do with that. Since, I mean, it is your only real form of monetization. Um, Nugi asked a good question about armor. I know the armor formula has been changed. I think that now, instead of, like, this is the kind of short of it, instead of dividing it by a higher number, it divides it by a lower number now. <laughs> so it divides it by 10 instead of 12 or something, was last, last I saw of it. But the armor formula has changed. I guess what was the, what was the intention with, intention with the armor changes, and what do you think the effects will be? The armor formula is very closely linked to the amount of damage that stuff deals, because it takes an exact amount of damage in the formula and uses it. So if you change it so stuff's dealing 20% more average, more damage because, you know, life totals are higher or whatever, then you just have to change the armor formula to compensate for it, otherwise armor becomes worse. My understanding is that this change was to compensate rather than to directly buff or nerf armor. Okay. So I'd have to check this with Carl. I, I mean, put it this way, I didn't know it had changed until you mentioned it, except it makes complete sense that it would have. Um, yeah. And my, my understanding is that's just compensation rather than direct buffing or nerfing, but I could be wrong. That was kind of what my expectation was, that it was mostly to do with the mob damage balances, but I thought maybe that you might have snuck something else in there as well to change things. Like, I I think a lot of people, like, have kind of forgotten about armor because of the popularity of evasion, but uh, armor I don't think ever really became bad. It just scaling armor was difficult um, or, you know, costly or not worth it in some cases. Um, do you think there's, is there any, like, plans for that, I guess? To make scale, scaling <coughs> armor more attractive? I haven't heard anything myself, but I'll, I'll talk with the guys about it. My understanding is that armor characters are the ones more likely to use melee, and melee right now with fortified D shotgunning and various other changes is having a pretty good defensive time. I agree that melee is having a pretty pretty good defensive time now, especially with like the changes to spells. Though I guess the shotgunning changes didn't really affect uh, the like armor and its right its its changes. Um, <laughs> in fact, I would say that although although melee is having a better time overall and seems to be in a pretty good place, and they do have fortify available now, which is a nice extra extra thing. Um, there's there's these new mobs in uh, Act Four that uh, have a have a twenty percent damage aura and uh, use tornado shot and puncture and they are super rippy. <laughs> they it's so nice. hard. I get seventy five percent damage. Okay, well, I'll, I'll talk to the guys about armor scaling. All right, cool. <laughs> I, I get seventy five percent armor, and that's like a lot from endurance charges and golem. So that doesn't scale. Like that doesn't have the penalties that armor has because it's the it's like hard reduction. And, um, I mean, they are still, like, one shotty. those things are crazy. I expect they'll be seeing some balancing, at least. <laughs> yeah, we'll make sure to include them in feedback if people notice stuff that's too dangerous. We kind of do want monsters to individually have something that makes them stand out, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the necros in the prison, how they, at, at stages in the past, have raised guys really aggressively and been a real pain. We, we like monsters having, you know, their rower charge-like thing that people are scared of. Yeah, yeah, totally. Oh, this Katarina quest, no thanks. <laughs> Last time I did this Katarina quest, I got these mummies, these chaos mummies that uh, were super nasty degen and just had infinity life. Then I had to kill nine of them. It, took, it was taking me like 20 minutes, and I was like, I think I might just go do another lap. <laughs> I don't think it's worth it. So I might have to report that one because might, that might be a bug how, how tough those particular mobs are. It was a little yeah. bit whack. Um, t -t 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 Oops, I clicked something in chat. I shouldn't have. Alright, what do we got? Um, do you know, uh, 
do you know of how the guys are approaching this like the skill guys are approaching the the changes to shotgunning for skills that didn't shotgun like f so things like tornado shot and split arrow and stuff for, well not split arrow but <laughs> to, uh, projectile attacks essentially are affected by the changes to lmp and gmp um what sort of i and at the moment haven't been changed too much in regards to that I'm I'm sure they'll be considering that. That's the. I mean, basically, it's just that we haven't got all of the balance changes we want to make for skills onto the realm. Yeah. The idea being that as long as as long as it can be clear which skills are not yet addressed, then people can use other stuff. I mean, may, maybe it'll be valuable for us to post a summary of where we're at with that, so players know not to give feedback on things that aren't quite finished, or you know, we can provide guidance on what expected changes we're planning to make. Well, that's a good question about the AI of monsters. I've, I've certainly noticed it, and it's been a big quality of life improvement as a Cascade character. Uh, the cha So, a the AI of monsters changed in, like, the way they, I guess, maybe the way they spawn, but they tend to group up more now, right? Yeah, they're more likely to walk towards the center of their group, which means that the pack stays as a pack rather than becoming incredibly disparate. That's really good for like that's a that's a buff to AOE by the way guys like making mobs stick closer together. I noticed that because my big one of my biggest frustrations well I had two big frustrations with Cascade in the past one that it was blocked by every single pebble, uh, which has been fixed now basically jumps gaps like it doesn't care, uh, and that um, the like the width of it meant that you were usually like you had to like shoot a pack three times you had to kill a pack three times over because the width of it wasn't quite there compared to the size of the pack. But now that they group up a lot more, I'm seeing a lot more like one-shotting of packs with it, which is really nice. But um, I guess what were the what was the kind of like the goal of the change? Like I have some theories, but I'm keen to hear it from your <coughs> words. There are, there's been a lot of changes to do with packs, especially with the introduction of bloodlines. And I wasn't involved in this particular change. I've only like, you know, heard that it has happened without hearing the conversation that led to it. But my understanding is that it addressed quite a lot of issues. Like previously a pack, due to the fact that monsters can amble when they're active but not um they're active but not, you know, fighting someone, they'd spread out so much that Bloodlines mods wouldn't necessarily work well with them. There's some other well, there's kind of some unannounced stuff that's relevant as well that I can't talk about yet that affects it. Okay. Potentially related to one of the new challenge leagues. And so it was important that we keep packs sticking together. Ah, here's a good one from Willy. Um, streamer privilege. Taking streamer questions. <laughs> uh, I was probably going to ask this one anyway. Maraketh uh, weapons uh, bring a whole lot of new implicits. I know you're an item guy, so you probably have some thoughts on this. Um, but how, I guess how do you feel about the balance of the different implicits between Maraketh weapons? We're, we're relatively go? happy. We're relatively happy with them, but we're happy to get feedback on it because it's. I mean, the advantage of the beta is if one of them is just crap and no one's using it, then we'll see that in the data and be able to fix it. And we can tell the we can tell what items people have equipped. We can say mm. how many users a staff uses, how many a dagger uses. Okay, out of those users, what's the percentage of each that's using Maraketh weapons of each tier? And we can say, whoa, there's no bow users using the Maraketh bow. Why is that? And potentially, you know, increase its implicit if necessary. <laughs> okay, well, there's well, there's definitely some opinions of uh, some of the Maraketh weapons being, you know, far weaker or far less useful, or having very very few uses compared to some of the other ones. Or being super right. niche. I mean, I guess things being niche isn't a problem, but some of them just seeming like they might need some work, so I guess make sure to give that feedback, guys. We had this intention with our introduction where we wanted to add new cool stuff for people to find in in-game and to craft, but we wanted to be really careful to not completely destroy people's existing top-tier crafts. You know, that feeling where you're playing an, an action RPG and an expansion comes out and you log in and all of your stuff was just worthless compared to even magical rare items of the previous, um, you know, magical low rare items um, that are now dropping in the expansion. So we wanted to make sure that while Maraketh weapons may now be the best weapons, it's only marginally better. You know, the yep. existing Merit gear is still mostly better until perfect Maraketh weapons start to be crafted, you know, years from now. Okay. Uh, Willie's specific question was, uh, I gave an example. He said, uh, for the example of 60% local crit versus 10% AoE is not even comparable. Axes also have longer range than maces to begin with. This is the case for many implicit stats. Uh, so I guess you guys, have you, do you have any thoughts on that so far? Things like that? I think it's probably worth raising that exact point and various other similar ones. Um, I'll, talk to, I'll talk to the guys about it tomorrow and see. Alrighty, cool. Cool. Oops. 
<laughs> Someone's asking if the pack AI is for that. same for the avian wretches. I think they have their own overriding AI to be as annoying as possible. <laughs> uh, someone, someone in chat was yeah. asking if we're doing quality on jewels. Uh, we're not yet. Option for the future, I guess. Indeed. Indeed. Have you seen the idea Hegemony asked about a skill that would attract monster towards us, like a gravitational thing, and it would have degen on life? What are your thoughts on it? Uh, I guess like the new gloves, but an actual skill. Right, so it's like Shockwave Totem plus the gloves. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it could be done. It would have to be um, run by the team. Previously, we've been we've been very careful about stuff that moves monsters around because of mm. sync reasons. Like, after shotgunning, sync is the next reason why we don't make a third of the skills that we design. Now, <clears throat> we have to be careful here because while deterministic lockstep doesn't have desync issues because it can't, we still have the normal predictive mode in there for people who have laggier connections. And while that's a ton better than it was in the past, it can still get out of sync on skills that are badly designed with sync in mind. So there are still restrictions on what we make, especially with stuff that moves monsters around. I mean, you remember Brutus Hook, for example. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you still have to, you definitely still have to account for those players that do have high latency and can't use lockstep. Damn. Yeah. It's also worth noting, by the way, with deterministic lockstep, that let's say you have a lag spike, like your, your ISP legitimately just doesn't send you data for like 100 milliseconds or something. And this happens every now and then, you know, especially in Australia and New Zealand. So if this happens, with the old system, the predictive one, everything keeps moving, everything keeps fighting, it's just that it gets slightly out of sync and normally corrects itself most of the time that happens, except when it doesn't. Whereas with the new system, if you're not getting data, you're not updating, right? So everything just stops. And that's just how it works because there is nothing, because you're displaying exactly what you've been told by the server, there is just nothing to say if you're not receiving any data. Yeah. And so this is something to bear in mind that the current predictive system is actually, in my opinion, superior from the point of view of being a better game experience, um, providing that you play around desync. The lockstep one um, has no desync, but it does have its own you know, costs associated with that. When you click, you have to wait a very small amount of time based on your latency before you move. And um, you know, latency will now affect you directly as opposed to being kind of smoothed over by the prediction. That makes sense, that makes sense. Um, someone's asking about uh, that you guys haven't released like specific patch notes was that was that intentional to not well, like the any... first problem yeah the first problem with releasing patch notes is they take a long time right mm. like for an average expansion I spend five maybe four and a half days writing patch notes when I should be doing you know useful stuff for the game <laughs> yeah. so patch notes just take so long because they're so carefully scrutinized if you miss one thing out which happens every now and then it gets you know we get accused of like you know stealth nerfing stuff and <laughs> it, it's very very difficult to get it correct. In addition, patch notes are the quickest way of enraging the community, right? You post a patch note, we've posted buffs that have been interpreted as nerfs before with vast amounts of hate mail and people threatening to, you know, do credit card chargebacks and stuff about something where we've actually improved their character rather than hurt it. So we're very, very, very careful about that as well. And it's partly that with this expansion, we want people to just play it and see what they think rather than having to be specifically told of every improvement. Now, we will eventually come up with patch notes um, once we get time towards the end of the beta, because obviously we do want to document the changes, but I don't see any value in providing them this early. Yeah, it's, there's going to be so many changes. I can totally understand that. Sure, the, better time, the time is better spelt than elsewhere. I don't believe there's any plans to make the beta open at any point, is there? It's going to remain closed, but you'll ramp up the key, uh, like the key's availability. Yeah, we'll be increasing key availabilities. There'll be giveaways on sites and various other ways of getting in, like events in game and so on, but it's not going to be publicly open. I mean, I've, I've considered us running some kind of open weekend or whatever, but to some extent, a lot of players are just looking to play through Act 4 once, and I'd rather they play it through. If they're that kind of player, I'd rather they play through Act 4 once it's finished rather than once, you know, in this version here, because this yeah. is kind of for feedback. And so I'd rather they wait till release day and then play it when they're able to buy microtransactions because at the moment you can't purchase microtransactions in the beta and, you know, the company has to stay in business. People have been asking about the MTX packs. What's, uh, do you, is there anything you can reveal at the moment or are you waiting to reveal those? <clears throat> so by that do you mean, do you mean about supporter packs? Yeah, yeah. We'll be releasing new supporter packs this week for The Awakening and we have them mostly finalized at the moment. They're very cool. Um, they're my favorite ones so far, partly because 
Um, they include new weapon effects, and these weapon effects, uh, they're just using tech that we haven't really had before, so they look, mm. they look very cool. And we unlike the open beta weapon effects, you actually get all the effects from the packs lower than the one that you're purchasing. So if you buy a, let's say you buy the 200 and whatever it is dollar pack, you get four weapon effects in there, so you can pick and choose the one that fits your character best. And they're of a variety of different colors and awesomeness. You know, the packs are individually themed around stuff. We have quite a cool theme going on, in my opinion, where we touch on various characteristics of each act, you know. Um, anyway, there's there's some cool stuff going on. Plus some cool physical swag, the, uh, the divination card tie-in that I mentioned. Um, some neat other character effects that you get, which are something, this particular type is something we haven't done before. And some of those can be quite imposing in town. So it sounds like they might have some other effects besides just kind of like making a fiery sword. <laughs> Yeah, which is it's, cool. It's, fire uh, sword. I I have the fire sword. It's very cool. But yeah, well, we have a variety cool. of new different effects for the for the weapons and also the character effects I mentioned, which we'll see more about in the, the coming days. So the new supporter packs uh, they include the awakening soundtrack as well and some other bits and pieces that I haven't mentioned. Nice. I'll pick one up just for the soundtrack, man. But <laughs> but the other stuff sounds like it might be pretty interesting too. I'm I'm hyped for that soundtrack. Add it to my playlist. And people need a people need a fifth forum title, right? Yeah, that's it. I think I've I think I've got all of them so far. It's getting longer and longer. It's making whenever I make like a one-line post now, it takes up half the thread. It's excellent. It makes <coughs> well, me feel very important. Well, that's what you paid for, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly. Right. <laughs> we're, we're gradually we're gradually shaving a few pixels off the um the size of the titles to make sure that it doesn't. <laughs> oh up. wow, you scam I mean, artists! I mean, em empty pixels, you know, so I, they just get a bit closer to you. No, I paid for those empty pixels, Chris. You can't take them away from me. Okay. I expect some outrage posts on forums and at the top of Reddit for this. This is point taken. This is unfair. You give me those empty pixels back. <laughs> Just as long as you write posts long enough to fill the whole space, we're good. <laughs> no, I'll I'll stick I'll stick to just writing Kappa on, online. Nice. Um, that's my contributions. <laughs> well, at least at least I'm not like just bumping my threads anymore since that's no longer necessary. <laughs> On my trade yeah. threads. <laughs> we'll very, we'll very likely be adding a bump button explicitly. For trade, for trade, I think it's not. I think um, POXYZ or POA or trade doesn't need it anymore. Actually, so that might not even be necessary. Okay. That's, that was my understanding, There's... at least that they changed. I'm not sure how some it people, it. some people have to read the thread manually as well, though. That's true. That's true. It was just the that. point recently when we realized that there were a million bump posts on the forum or something. It's probably unnecessary server loop or something for you guys, I imagine. Or a necessary mess. Um, t -t 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 -t. Uh, supporter packs are currently upgraded, gradable uh, discamus. If you, it's all really well integrated now. If you buy a po if you buy a pack, you can upgrade at a later date. It's like a button you can do it. Yeah. But it, it, so the way this works. You can't upgrade from one set of supporter packs to another. So if you bought the hundred dollar pack at the previous at a previous set of supporter yeah. packs, you can't change it into a two hundred dollar pack here. But you can upgrade any points you've purchased. So let's say you went on the site right now and bought a hundred dollars of points because you want to support us. You can contribute those towards a pack when it gets released this week. So you can get the points now if you want, and those can be contributed up to eighty percent of the value of a pack. So, for example, if you're planning on buying a two hundred and something dollar pack, then up to eighty percent of that value can come from points that you buy today. And this is all automatic, you don't have to contact support, it just detects the purchases and lets you pay the difference. So you get to kind of spend your points to buy a pack, right? Yeah, I mean, it's it's not using the points so much as taking the points away and giving you the pack and it all adds up at the end of the day mathematically. Yeah, fair enough. But it's at a, you know, it's at a worst rate, you're better right. off buying the pack when it comes right. out. I mean, obviously, people can wait for the pack to come out, but let put it this way, let's say you're in a situation where you need stash tabs today and you need to buy points. You're not losing out if you plan to buy a pack anyway because you can just contribute it. Yeah, yeah, okay. I see, I see. Yep. Um... Ch -ch -ch. How much, uh, how much more are you guys planning to change this, or add to the skill tree, I guess, specifically? Because there's going to be a lot of changes and tweaks and stuff. Uh, I know that currently it's there's a few small changes, like some keystones and a few things moved, but mostly it's been about the addition to the jewels. Is there, is there more stuff coming to the skill tree? I, I think I know of some things, like I think there's more totem stuff coming and maybe Warcry stuff you mentioned in the past, I think? 
They're, they are planning to add some more nodes as necessary, but it's also a matter of using the skill tree as a tool for the balance, right? So, for example, if it's determined that, you know, characters are having difficulty in Act 2 of Normal, then maybe the, the size of the notables that you're getting access to at level 12 will get evaluated. Maybe more get added, so maybe some get removed, you know? Hmm. It's, it's just another balance tool like any other thing. So I can't promise too many specific changes, but I'm certain it will change substantially during the beta, especially as people break the jewel system backwards and then we have to, you know, move all the jewel uh, sockets around. Okay. On the topic of passive tree changes, how much do you know about uh, Eldritch Battery and its, its balancing? This is an area that I've let Rory deal with, and I'm aware of how it works now, but I don't understand the exact ramifications for each skill. Yeah. So I, I prefer not to comment on it, other than the fact that it is intentional that this is a slight nerf to Eldritch Battery. It was running out of control oh, somewhat. I mean, so was, it shouldn't, yeah, <laughs> obviously. I mean, it shouldn't be interpreted as a one for one replacement, but it is a yeah. system the guys here the guys here quite like, and there are a number of advantages to it. Having said that, it's one of those things that we're throwing out there with a beta rather than on the live realm. So if you don't like it or have feedback, hmm. I mean, you know, your videos on this have been excellent in terms of discussing the positive and negative aspects and and um helping raise awareness of that and promoting good discussion so in Velasco did to see more of this a an excellent job as well so that's worth yep. checking out i'm sure you guys have seen in Velasco's feedback as well he, he has beta access right uh yeah yeah he's he made a beta he made a character testing uh it as well he tested the recharge rate delay which uh i feel at the moment is too niche and uh i think he did a really good job of proving that on his character he like right. basically invested everything you could into recharge rate delay and uh, kind of, you know, it's like fight two packs and then wait two seconds, three seconds <laughs> before you can fight again, which is not really, that's good. So there's some, definitely some work to be done there. I might uh, I might grab Rory in the future, guys, and talk to him a bit about it since he probably Fair knows enough. a bit more He about knows it. a lot about that. Mm. Do you know if Gouda has better access? Um, I believe Gouda is in the beta. Yeah, I think I, seen, I, think I saw him streaming it. I'd be interested to see him test some sort of interesting things to do with EB. The thing about that is, though, because currently we're playing in essentially a self-found economy, like, there's a lot of stuff I really want to test, um, like, you know, Mind Over Matter with Eldritch Battery, what can you, you know, what can you do with that? But it's difficult to test things like that when, you know, you can't just get your hands on a Cloak of Defiance, like, it's very difficult to do a lot of testing in here. Um, you guys are planning on doing more, um... Like, character transfers later in the beta, right? To test certain things like that? On a case-by-case -case basis. We, I mean, it's certainly not going to be a general thing. It'll pretty much be, if you can persuade Rory slash Carl that your particular character should be transferred to test a particular thing and they can't do it themselves, then probably. But it's worth noting, like, character transfers are dangerous. You could have tons of unID'd stuff in your stash. Transfer it over, ID the stuff, and now know what they are and trade them at an advantage, right? Mm. There's there's reasons why we're careful here. Yeah. So that you can't so that you can't see whether your legacy unique ID is to be a good face breaker or a bad one and then trade it as unid if it's bad and so on. And now I've just told everyone how that works, so that's probably not great, but this is the reason why we're careful about character transfers. So we'll make sure before doing transfers that someone doesn't have a pile of important stuff sitting in their inventory and so on so they can't cheat. Rip it. Rory's inbox as well. I'm sorry, Rory. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No one, no one, mail Rory. He'll contact you. Um, but <laughs> sounds good. If you guys, if you guys make some particularly compelling feedback on the forums, maybe then you might grab some mm. attention for character transfers. All right, cool. It's worth noting we can transfer characters from the live realm into our testing servers, which are like the beta but not the beta, and we can also transfer beta characters to our testing servers. So as we see people reporting stuff, like someone will play through and we'll say, man, they're finding it easy, what have they done? And then we'll go and roll back the database to the exact point they were finding it easy, copy their character across, play it, say, well, this is easy, why is it? And fiddle around with this stuff until we've worked it out. <laughs> so this stuff happens without people necessarily knowing. Yeah, yeah, right on. I'm doing uh, a skeleton's vulnerability map here, guys, which uh, can include the new skeletal archers that use puncture and tornado shots. So if I die in this map, it'll be it'll be kind of highlighting what I was talking about earlier. <laughs> if I get any of those packs, I think I did see some last time I ran a skeletal map. It's good stuff. <laughs> I do like the I do like that in Act Four. You guys, yeah, actually, I wanted to bring this up because I was worried that. We were gonna see a full act of Scepter of God level troll mobs. I was pretty, I was pretty worried. I, I can't handle Scepter, Chris. It, it drives me nuts, man. <laughs> Arctic Leapers, bubble mobs. You know, high, even just even the statues are annoying with their eye shots and high and you know, like high damage mitigation. It's uh, oh, that's own. 
But um, I'm really happy that in uh, Act 4 there's a nice mixture of mobs. There's some ones that are more challenging and more dangerous. There's nothing really that I've found super annoying so far. Oh, well, Um And then there is mobs that are kind of like your zombie mobs. Like there's new, there's new skeletons and stuff like that, which I'm happy about. I love fighting skeletons in ARPGs. Yeah, so, we've tried not yeah. to make them onerous because the scepter was like the, the apex of the game. It's building up to the final boss fight at the time. And so there were goals for the monsters there to be relatively difficult. But they probably were too synergistic in terms of being quite directedly difficult. You know, each one, this one hoses melee, this one hoses ranged, and so on. Um, people want to know if uh, the supporter packs will include beta access. Should they? I personally don't think so. Though I know a lot of people want to buy beta access. I don't know, I don't have a really solid argument. It just feels like there was a time in GGG's history where it was the crowdfunding for the game that you guys sold beta keys and that I, I don't think really, really anyone had an issue with it now. But um, I don't know, like, what do you guys reckon, chat? What do you guys reckon? Yes or no in chat? <laughs> it seems pretty mixed. I don't know, I'm pretty mixed on it as well. I feel like there was a time when it was it was good that you guys sold beta keys, but I feel like, I, I don't know. I've... Yeah, like <laughs> someone in chat says, you shouldn't, but please do it. <laughs> I think that sums it up. People really want it, but I don't know if you guys so should. We don't, we don't have any issues with the with the idea in terms of an ethical standpoint, right? The beta's getting wiped, the knowledge that people get from playing can be easily gleaned from streaming, there's more and more access granted over time. That's no problem as far as we're concerned. The issue is basically when are we ready for more players? And if so, how are we getting them in? Like, ideally people are buying packs regardless whether they have keys or not. And we're trying to get people in through a lot of different ways. The question is, are we ready for that when we release these packs? Do we do it later? Do we just do it through giveaways and skill-based challenges? Do we just keep it random? You know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of ways to scale up the beta, and it's it's a, it's something that we um, are still looking at, trying to work out what vectors people get into the beta through. Yeah, it's a bit of a, it's a little bit of a controversial topic, I, but uh, I don't know. I guess I, I said before that I wouldn't really ever have an issue with it. Like if you guys did decide to do it, I just felt like I don't know. I it's, I I feel like I can't talk on the topic because I'm already in the beta. <laughs> I feel like I can't give an answer on it, but uh, I don't Some really people, have a strong like, reason either way. The thing is, there's such a... It's just a feeling. So I get a lot of emails about beta access, right? And people really want into the beta. Um, they, like, they're begging to send money, right? You know, what is your bank account? I'll send the money today. I won't tell anyone. All this kind of stuff. Um, there's, there's a level of desperation to get in, and it's kind of a shame to keep people out who are that keen because they provide good feedback. On the other hand, we can't let everyone in at the same time necessarily. You know, I, I wish we could make the beta 100% public, but that would expose a potentially unfinished product to a lot of people on a server which potentially couldn't handle the full strain of all those players. Here we go, we're gonna do it, we're gonna do a straw poll. <laughs> I don't know if this will be helpful for you guys or not. Uh, GGG sells beta keys. This is mostly just curiosity. This will not determine the fate of beta key sellage, I promise. No. Yes. There we go. Official straw poll incoming. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Alrighty, here we go. Let me post that a few times and we'll have a look. I reckon it's going to be really close. I reckon it's going to be super close. So you guys are, I guess, currently like discussing the option. It's not currently planned though, right? Anything can change. Mm -hmm. If we want, if we want to sell access, we can do it. If we don't want to sell access, we don't do it. And it's more about the timing yeah. of when people are in. Yeah, that's an important point, and that's like a big point of the reason why, like, I've been saying that you guys that the closed close beta was the best idea instead of doing an open beta because it's useless to get a bunch of feedback at the start if you're pl already planning on changing a lot of stuff when you mm. want a lot of your feedback later on or midway through or as you make various changes you want fresh feedback opinions. Makes a lot of sense. Looks like it's uh, it's pretty it's pretty close. It's pretty close, but um, yeah, not as close as my solo party straw poll. <laughs> yeah, I did another straw poll that was like exactly fifty fifty. Fifty eight forty two in favor of no fifty nine forty one. So yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty mixed. But there you go. <laughs> I'll leave that going. Alrighty, what do we got here? Alrighty, guys, keep the questions rolling. 
I don't, I don't personally think that the introduction of beta keys into the packs would be a major driver for the sale of the packs because people are probably going to buy them anyway, right? People have been really good with their support. But it's worth noting that supporting the company does guarantee future content in a way that not supporting the company doesn't, if you see what I mean. We, like, the company is doing okay enough that it will definitely be around. There's no problems. It's just that if there is a large degree of support, then we will be able to commit to doing larger acts, scaling up the team, and basically more Path of Exile for more people for more time. Yeah, I mean, if you guys are at a point where people are buying enough MTXs as you release them just to keep the servers running, then that's what's going to happen. But if people are buying the supporters pack, then it's like, we're going to go crazy with this next expansion. We're going to put in 18 bosses. <laughs> So I can understand that. <laughs> that was yeah. my interpretation the other thing of what you were saying, yeah? <laughs> the other thing to note as well about the beta key thing is currently there's a very large amount of, well, at least as far as people report to me, though I'm not sure I believe it, of people trying to get beta keys to sell on third-party sites, right? You know, I, I get mails all the time of people trying to trick me to give them access, and then, you know, it's, it's clear that they're going to sell the key. There's people creating tens and tens of thousands of accounts which aren't selected by the timer most of the time, and people... You know, I've even had a case of like someone trying to get in as a journalist to then sell their key because they can get $200 for it or something. If we were to include them in supporter packs, it would eliminate the wow. third-party market for them because now there's a way to directly get them um, from the company. That's, uh, that was a little sad to hear that, <laughs> but I guess it's to be expected. Them cash monies. <laughs> but the real question is how much money are you going to charge for Steam mods, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> That's the hot topic of the day. <laughs> it certainly has been the hot topic in gaming lately. Bit of a controversial one. 